Okay, um, so thank you all for attending. This is the first uh, Township of Putlinch um, Economic Development Open House. Um, hopefully this can be something that we continue into the future. Um, so my name is Courtney Hoytbox. I'm the Municipal Clerk here with the Township of Putlinch. So I'll just briefly go over the agenda that we have for tonight. Um, so we do have a number of presenters that are joining us as well. So just a thank you in advance uh, to everyone for coming out. It was great um, that you could be here. So we're gonna start with a Township of Puss Lunch presentation. Um, so that'll be myself, I'll run through about 10 slides and then I'll pass it on to the County of Wellington. They're also joining us, it's our economic development team and I'll let them introduce themselves when they come up. After the county, we have Business Center Guelph Wellington. They're here as well. Again, I'll let them do their introductions. Uh, following that, we have Innovation Guelph, uh, and then Wellington Waterloo Community uh, Futures. And then finally, we have a presentation uh, on Prepper. So again, when these folks come up, um, they can just take the moment to introduce themselves and uh, share their slide deck that they have presented. So following our presentations, uh, we'd encourage anyone that's attending uh, to visit our community partners, pick up whatever um, information they have here to share. Um, if you have any uh, requests or would like additional information, you can feel free to leave your information with any of them or with township staff. And again, just help yourself to the refreshments throughout the night. They're just at the back of the room. All right, so. We'll use the on the screen. There we go. Uh, so the first thing I just wanted to briefly talk about um, is the Township of Puss Lynch brand new community guide and business directory. So this is something that um, council has initiated for April in 2024. Uh, so businesses can register and be included in this guide by contacting staff or completing a registration form that we have here tonight. You can find this online as well for anyone that's uh, listing in virtually. Uh, so the guide itself is going to include a business directory, but also just some general information about the township. It's going to include our trail systems, parks, places to visit, um, information about uh, the county services they offer, township, a little bit about our committees and councils. So it's kind of going to be a one-stop shop. It's going to be mailed directly to households in Puss Lynch, uh, paper in a paper form, as well as on our website. Um, so this is going to be used um, for businesses to be able to have their listing in there. It also um, is an opportunity for businesses to submit photos. So we actually have received some wonderful uh, photos and imagery from our businesses already. Some of these are being used in the guide and others on our website. So again, part of the registration process can be to sign that photo release and send those photos in. So the next slide that I'm gonna show, is around the second um, initiative that the township is launching in 2024. So this is our Puss Lynch profile features. Um, so this is a chance to spotlight township businesses through a profile article that will be circulated through the Puss Lynch Pioneer on a monthly basis. So we'll be providing businesses that sign up for this a series of questions to answer about their business, uh, what makes it special to Puss Lynch, again, provide those uh, photos, talk about the um, benefits of shopping local, that sort of thing. And so these will be um, included in the Puss Lunch Pioneer in an article, as well as on our township website and in our council agenda packages to ensure that our elected officials are also aware of all the great local businesses that we have. Um, so again, both of these uh, initiatives are free to business owners. There's no cost associated. Uh, you simply have to sign up and, and submit your information to the township to be included. All right, so the next um, initiative that's been ongoing for some time that I'd just like to take a few moments to highlight is our uh, Township Community Improvement Plan, so the CIP. Um, so the purpose of the CIP is to support revitalization, beautification, renewal, and economic activity in the township's key urban centers. So the CIP is intended to stimulate investment in privately owned land and buildings by providing financial assistance to property owners and tenants and focus municipal resources on programs, studies, and other initiatives that will contribute to the overall improvement of the CIP area. So what is a CIP? 
So a CIP is a planning document that sets out tools and strategies for improving the built economic and social economic um, environment in designated areas of the municipality. So the primary goals, as noted, of a CIP are to promote beautification and restoration of the public and private property, celebrate and restore local and built cultural heritage, attract new business development, support and promote existing businesses, encourage active transportation and enhance recreational opportunities, and provide attractive streetscapes including parking, gateway signage, uh, tree plantings, and lightings. Um, in addition, provide that safe pedestrian and cycling connection between uh, Morriston and Aberfoyle specifically. So this map shows what our current improvement um, project area is. So you'll note it's a focus on Aberfoyle and, and Morriston uh, at the moment. So looking ahead, um, the township is currently part of a working group that includes the County of Wellington and other member municipalities, and they're working towards updating the CIP programs. So as part of the 2024 budget process, Township Council has directed staff to investigate the potential to expand the township CIP area to include the entire township. So this would make all businesses in the township eligible to, eligible to apply for those financial incentives subject to budget consideration. So again, just expanding from the previous map that we showed, which was just our um, our corridor area to expanding to the entire municipality. So um, just speaking about the CIP and those financial incentives, what exactly are they? Um, so eligible businesses can apply for the following currently available financial incentive programs. So I'm just going to talk briefly about each of them. Um, so the first one is the planning and building fees grant. So this is available to business owners. Um, and it is um, intended to provide uh, up to 100% coverage of eligible uh, building fees and planning fees for a proposed project. So the only, um, the other factor that to make these programs eligible is that you also have to um, be eligible for one of the other uh, incentives. So the project itself could be um, receive grant funding for those building and planning fees, so long as it also uh, was one of the below four noted uh, incentives as well. So it has to be combined with one of the other incentives. Um, the next one is um, around signage landscape improvement grant. And this is eligible to property owners and tenants to assist with the financing of improvements to buildings, um, private property. So this grant is intended to promote aesthetic accessibility and functional improvements to buildings and properties. So this grant funding could actually be up to 50% of the, of the cost of the project to a maximum of $3,000. And where the project um, intends to use original materials or restoration of architectural detailing, that grant could increase up to $4,500. The building improvement grant, um, this is similar again, and it's, it's intended to assist eligible property owners and tenants um, with improvements to existing buildings that may otherwise be considered cost prohibitive. So this program is intended to support improvements to private property uh, to meet build current building code, um, approve the aesthetic quality, and provide for safe and usable eligible uses. And this grant funding, again, can be up to 50% of the project cost to a maximum of 3000 The Building Conversion and Expansion Grant is, again, a similar type of grant. Um, and this is uh, available to eligible property owners to assist in conversion of existing unused or underused space into new eligible uses. Um, so this program would exist in the expansion of existing eligible uses, and it's a grant funding uh, on the basis of $10 per square foot um, to a maximum of $3,000. So again, just to assist with those new building projects. As um, in addition, uh, any engineering or professional services are also eligible for funding under this grant. Uh, and finally, the last one is the motor vehicle and bicycle park grant uh, funding. And this is um, for property owners that are looking to create new spaces in their parking lots, um, specifically for uh, bicycle um, or vehicle parking. And this grant is 50% up to a maximum of $500. Uh, so finally, uh, the partnership with the County of Wellington. So the funding that was noted above was uh, township funding. So. The county has a separate program called the Wellington County Investball Community Improvement Program, which they will elaborate on. 
Um, applicants through the Township CIP are automatically considered for the County of Wellington funding. The County of Wellington Invest Well program is a funding relationship between the county and the township, and the county issues the approved contributions to the township for distribution to the successful business. And I will let the county go into their programming a little bit more. And thank you for listening, and it looks like the County of Wellington is up next. Uh, thank you, Courtney. Uh, my name is Christina Mann, and I'm here with my colleague, James Vasselbeck, and we'll be talking to you a little bit about the County of Wellington tonight, so thank you for having us. So at the county, we run a number of programs um, and initiatives that support local businesses, that foster community development, and we promote the region of Wellington County as a great place to live, work, and invest in. We work with all of our seven member municipalities and including the township of Post Lynch. And every municipality is very different. They have their different priorities and we do our best to support them individually. Um, you will see uh, up on the screen a number of our focus areas um, that our team currently works on. Um, but tonight we wanted to go a little bit more into the programs that you as business owners and entrepreneurs might feel, feel are applicable to you and you might be able to take advantage of. I think really what we want to bring across is that we are here to help. As a Wellington County business owner and entrepreneur, we are here to support you. We're here to help. If we don't know how to help you or if we need more information, we hopefully can connect you with somebody who, who can assist you. Um, so that's really what we wanted to um, showcase here today. And I'm gonna pass it over to James to take it away with a different program. Uh, thanks, Christina. Uh, as mentioned, my name is James. I manage uh, a few different programs at the County of Wellington. Um, the first I'll talk to you about today is the Business Retention and Expansion Program. The county's been working in this portfolio since as early as 2014, um, and it's continued to grow ever since then. So uh, in 2017, we held a countywide survey. Uh, we interviewed 140 businesses countywide. Uh, and the purpose of this survey was to understand um, uh, cross-sector needs and also just introduce ourselves as a county economic development team. We were fairly, fairly young at that time. Um, so as Christina said, uh, you know, we want to introduce ourselves and, and just let businesses know that we're here to support them. Uh, in 2021, uh, we focused on COVID-19 challenges. Uh, we interviewed quite a few businesses across the county. Uh, the purpose of this survey was to understand what challenges businesses were having with COVID-19 uh, and what supports were they looking for from the various levels of government. Um, in 2020, uh, back Backtracking a little bit, we held uh, transportation consultations with businesses. Uh, the purpose of these interviews was to talk about transportation needs from our largest employers. So we interviewed 11 of Puss Lynch's largest employers uh, to talk about if transportation was a challenge for the workforce, um, and if so, possible solutions. And we were really trying to uh, gather an appetite or, or see if there was an appetite uh, for an employer-specific transportation solution what we found was um, employers had figured out their own ways to get their workforce to the business, but what they really were enticed by is our ride well program. And in the slide, I'll go into more detail about that. Um, so as the program continues to grow, we're, we're here tonight to, again, um, explain how we're going to uh, get more involved in business retention expansion. So um, part of that is coming out in front of groups like this. Uh, we'll also be doing door knocking uh, come fall 2023, so in the next month or two. Um, the door knocking will be focused mainly on the downtown areas, um, but we do want to offer support to any employer in Wellington County, large or small. Um, so stay tuned for the door knocking. Uh, we'll definitely reach out ahead of time and just let you know we're coming. Uh, the purpose of that will be, again, introduce ourselves, let you know that we're here to support you however we can. Uh, and then we also want to understand, you know, where are you post-COVID? Uh, are you experiencing challenges? Do you have future plans? And, and how can we support those plans? 
So as previously mentioned, we also have the RideWell program. This is a countywide public transit pilot service, uh, and it's a pilot until 2025 under a grant with the provincial government. Um, so back in 2015, uh, we held a countywide study in partnership with the Rural Ontario Institute uh, and found that transportation was a really big challenge for our community. Um, fast forward a little bit, we applied for a grant from the provincial government. We were approved for $500,000 originally to launch this thing. Uh, and then due to COVID, it got extended two years with an additional $250,000. So it's been running since October 2019. Um, it's completely on demand door to door. It's a tech based solution. Uh, so, you know, you download an app or you go on a website mainly to book your rides, but we do also have a, a phone option available. It operates Monday to Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. And again, it's door to door. So, any address in Wellington County, you can book a ride to or from with our service. Uh, we also offer door to door service into the city of Guelph, uh, but you need to be coming from or going to the county of Wellington. So just because Guelph has, you know, Guelph Transit and Uber and taxis, and they're well serviced by transportation solutions, uh, we don't service those Guelph to Guelph rides, but we can certainly get you there to access those other solutions. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, uh, lots of our employers have made use of this service so far. So. Um, you know, we found that there wasn't a need for employer specific transportation, but lots of employers were excited about the opportunity to get people to work when their car breaks down or the person they were relying on a ride with a parent or a colleague uh, can't get them there that day. Well, maybe they can use ride well to get there and they won't miss a day of work now. Courtney talked about the post lunch CIP, which is a great preface for me to talk about the County Wellington CIP. Um, so you can think of the County of Wellington CIP more as a top-up program for the Puss Lynch CIP. Uh, so as an upper tier municipality, we fund, uh, our funds flow through the local municipal CIP. So as she said, if you are approved for Puss Lynch CIP, uh, you may be eligible for funding, for further funding from the county. Um, we do have our own set of goals that we use to judge whether or not to fund a project. Uh, they are closely aligned with the ones that Courtney went over. Um, so, you know, is the project using land strategically? These would be your projects that are being built on vacant or underutilized land. Um, is it providing rental housing? If it's providing rental housing, that's something that we're interested in. Uh, is it improving building infrastructure? So these would be like your facade improvements, uh, your renovations, maybe it's an add-on to your business. Um, those types of things are also something that we, we look at. Um, is it diversifying the economy? Uh, so, you know, is it something new for your business and also new for, for the county? The best example of this is agricultural on-farm usage. So if you're doing something new uh, on your farm, uh, we want to hear about it and there might be funding available. And then lastly, uh, promoting tourism. If you're promoting tourism in the county, um, if it's, a, if it's a project that's going to contribute to tourism, uh, either in Puss Lynch or across the county, again, that's something that we, we want to look at. We might have funding available for. Um, this, the program's been pretty successful overall. Uh, on the slide, you'll see two really good examples. Again, uh, Reunion in downtown Morriston was approved by both Puss Lynch and the county. Uh, they converted the old Envers building downtown to a new restaurant, uh, and, and it looks fantastic. Uh, the Morse Medical Center was another one that we contributed funding towards. Uh, again, it's a beautiful building. It's just outside of downtown Morriston, and uh, it brought some new healthcare services to the community, which was much needed. The last program I'm going to talk about is our tourism signage program. So we currently have three locations located in, in the township of Puss Lynch. The first is Wellington Road 46 uh, on Brock Road. Uh, it's uh, it's by the Aberfoyle Go Station. You'll see it if you're heading towards Guelph. Um, there's another one on 124. Uh, again, if you're sort of heading towards Guelph, you'll see that one. Uh, and then the other one's at 34 and 32. Uh, we currently only have the four businesses participating in, in, uh, from Puss Lynch, and we'd love to get more. Um, Really the value that I find the employers that uh, participate in this program find is that it's a really good marketing opportunity for them. Uh, we try and put these sign locations at high traffic areas. Um, so the Brock Road one, you're catching traffic from, you know, Morrison, Hamilton, even 401. 
Um, so it's a really good marketing opportunity. It's also a bit of a wayfinding exercise. So if someone's coming, uh, maybe their GPS breaks down and they can't find you, well, they can see our sign and know that they're 10 kilometers away. Um, it's $250 per sign per year for this program, or if you opt to pay a lump sum of three years, we give you a 10% discount. So again, just another marketing opportunity. Um, if anyone ever has questions about it, uh, my email will be on the last slide. I, I'd be happy to take them. I think I'll hand it back to Christina. Thanks, James. Um, there are only four tourism businesses on our signs, but we know that Post Ledge Township has some fantastic visitor experiences. And in fact, um, some of the county's most popular visitor destinations, including the Abbeville Farmer's Market and the Donkey Sanctuary are located here in the township. Um, you also have a number of boutique or emerging tourism experiences that are a little bit more personalized, such as alpaca yoga or trail rides. Um, cycling is, is a big one that we're looking at across the county. So there's a lot happening in the tourism landscape in Puslunch Township, and we want to help and elevate that to, to the next level. So we don't have... Sorry, I should probably change that slide. <laughs> we don't have a typical uh, tourism office or a traditional tourism office for the County of Wellington, um, but we do work to support those tourism operators and tourism businesses. We have just conducted at the beginning of the year the county's first tourism strategy, and we know there's a lot of work to be done here locally and across the county. And um, one of them is to understand what that tourism business network looks like, connect with those businesses and see what kind of supports they need. There's also a lot of opportunity in terms of product development. And lastly, of course, uh, promotion. We uh, do promote tourism and, and, and things to do and to see and to experience in Wellington County currently on the experiencedwellington.ca website. It's a great platform for anybody, maybe a visitor or also locals to see what's happening around them and how they can get out and support businesses. Um, we have a very active events calendar and list um, experiences per season or per activity. So if you're a tourism business or if you know of any tourism businesses that we may have missed, we'd love to meet them, talk to them and make sure they're included here. And anybody involved in events organization, your community event and your visitor tourism event should be on there. Um, and the other thing we do around that ties into tourism a little bit, and we've been doing for quite a while, is the Taste Real Local Food Program. This program, first purpose is to connect consumers uh, with businesses where they can shop local, with farms, with restaurants and retailers that have a local food available. And we have a number of different uh, marketing materials to promote those businesses. Our most popular and the longest standing one is the Wellington County local food map. You see it up here on the slide and we have some copies available at the table. It's been a guide to local food, um, all of Wellington County for since 2005. It's grown and changed over the years, but it's still really popular in a digital age. Everybody still wants this paper um, map, which is great. Uh, we have built on that and created a food experience guide, which leads you more to those experiential pieces around agri and food tourism. We work closely with our farmers markets on a number of initiatives, including a market trail and a market box delivery uh, initiative. And lastly, we organize events such as the Fall Rural Romp, a self-guided farm and food tour. The next one is coming up September 30th and it's in uh, Southern Wellington County I have some maps. We have 22 locations participating. It should be a really fun day out. Um, so any farm and food businesses that are not part of our uh, program at this moment, it's a free program. We'd love to learn about them and make sure they're included and highlighted. And this is our last slide really. Uh, we wanted to make sure our 
people here today and anybody on a call knows that the county has a business focused website and on this website you will find anything from business supports current grant opportunities uh, business events uh, all of our partner organizations are listed in there we are very lucky in wellington county we have a very strong uh, network of support organizations for businesses you will hear from our colleagues uh, shortly but they're all there. It's it's a great um, place to go if you're if you're new, if you wanted to find out more, and you have all our contact information on there as well. We also maintain a Wellington County business directory. It's large. There's a lot going on, and businesses are always changing and changing their services. Uh, new businesses are opening, um, other ones are closing. So we try to keep that as much up to date as we can. I hope all your businesses are on there. If they aren't, please give us a call. We'd love to add you. We can do that at any time throughout the year. And the same, if you have a business listing that may not be up to date, or you'd like to change something, just give our office a call. We'd be very happy to, to do that right away for you. Yeah, and I think that's it for us. Um, James and I will stick around. We'd love to talk to you. We have some materials available here and, um, yeah, we hope to to connect with you in the future. Thank you. Let me get myself sorted here. Make sure I'm going the right direction. And hopefully, it's the nope. There's one more. There we go. That's us. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, for those who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Christelle Moines. And I'm the Executive Director of Business Center Guelph Wellington. We are one of 24, or 24, 43, I don't know where I got 24 from, uh, 43 small business centers across Ontario. And it is our mandate to help small business enterprise. So startup, um, I'll talk a little bit about our services. I echo what Christina says. We are very fortunate that we live in a community where business is supported. So myself, I have my other colleagues that are here that you'll hear from as well tonight. Together, we all work together. And I want to emphasize that because we collectively want to make sure that you do well as a business owner in this community. And if you're not being serviced or you have issues that maybe we can't help with, I will certainly refer you to my colleagues and partners here in this room. So I really want to emphasize that because it's one of the communities, I would say, that authentically does that. So thanks for saying that, Christina, because we all work hard at doing that. So, so a little bit about us. Um, it is, like I said, we support small businesses. We do serve Guelph and Wellington County. Just so you know, we have a picture. Um, there was a front picture there where we're, our office is located in City Hall of Guelph, uh, but we do satellite work in small communities across the Wellington County. And uh, all of our services are available virtual and things like that. So COVID sort of taught us a lot of lessons about being uh, agile in our business model. We had to take a look at our own business model and be virtual in our presentations as well. So we've maintained that as well. Um, we are, as you can see, all growth stages of development. And I sort of place us on a continuum of care, if you will. So what I mean by that is that the business center tends to help a lot of startup, smaller size businesses, smaller scale. Uh, we do work with expanding businesses as well. Um, our colleagues at Innovation Guelph do a different level of work with both startup and existing businesses. And we kind of know each other's space. That's why we say we work together and refer. And then our friends, of course, at uh, Community Futures do the same thing. So we're all well-versed in it. So if you're not sure where you fit, ask us and we'll tell you. We'll help you and direct you in that way accordingly. Uh, we are funding predominantly comes from the Ministry of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. That's a provincial organization. So that's about 70% of our funding. Uh, the other 20%, we work with our partners at County of Wellington, Center Wellington, as well as City as Guelph. And, and we have other sponsors and corporate sponsors that sort of put towards that as well. And then we do some work in fee for service as well. Um, we sit on all types of boards. So the business center makes it our business to understand what's going on in economic development. We sit on boards of trade. We sit on, we involve with our chambers of commerce, 
all across the county, um, anywhere that we need to be in order to make sure that we're getting the information that we can then collectively pass on to our, our businesses that need our help and assistance and direction as well. So we try to be as informed as possible uh, and certainly be able to direct you accordingly. And as I said, if we don't know the answer, we'll find out and make sure that you get the answer. Uh, these are just a number of founding partners. So again, the province was one of our founding partners, City of Will, Wellington County. Been, we've been around for 24 years. Uh, we'll be celebrating 25 years next year, so we're very excited about that. It's a long time to be doing what we've been doing, um, but we love what we do, and we have a great team that does it. This is just a snapshot of some of my members of my team. As I said, our my colleagues we continue to work virtually, so I'll explain to you how it works and how you can get involved with us, but uh, we have a varied amount of specialists in all different fields that they bring their expertise to the table. So what we do is when we initially talk to you in a consultation, we make sure that you get an advisor that is probably the most well-versed in that specific area that you're looking to expand on. That way we're not wasting your time by talking to somebody that doesn't know what they're talking about or is not relevant to what you need to know. Um, so we try to do some of that fielding up front to make sure that you do get that expertise up front. Okay, so I have a really great team. I'm very blessed to work with the people that I work with. Our consultations, I always like to know they're free of charge. So just as I mentioned, I should have said that right from the beginning. Any of our services, the majority of them, about 80% of our services are free of charge. The reason being because we are funded through the province. So in essence, it's your taxpayers' dollars. I strongly suggest you use those. You work, we all worked hard and we paid our taxes. And so I would strongly suggest you use this type of sources and consultations and things that we have available to you because it is, uh, you know, like I said, it's our money that's already you've spent and you want to make sure you get the best return on it. All the consultations are confidential. So when you make an appointment with one of my advisors, they we all have signed a confidentiality agreements, even if you know somebody or maybe you're, you know, it's a small community, let's be honest. Uh, people know people know people. They are bound within those reins of confidentiality. So you can feel free to speak freely in these consultations. And I think that's important to know, okay? Um, and basically, like I said, we try to triage ahead of time through our booking system to make sure that you get the right advisor up front. So we try to sort of spend some of that time. We have multiple different advisors. So if there's some specialties, maybe you need help in a couple areas, we'll make sure that we facilitate those conversations as well, okay? Customer Service 101, that's what we preach and teach. A um, couple of our programs, we have a very basic Business 101. It's a two hour workshop that we offer. Most times it's online, although we're starting to get more uh, in person, more in person again, we're getting in person again. Uh, we're actually having people saying, we wanna go back and meet people again and sit in a classroom and talk to people and actually sit beside people. Um, so we've started to do that too. And you'll notice on our programming workshop schedules online, you'll be able to see whether they're in person or online. Um, but this two hour is a great way, I kind of call it sort of flying at a 30,000 foot level, just to sort of get you thinking about all the things you need to think about when starting a business. We talk about licensing, we talk about permits, we talk about probably things that you didn't know that you needed. Uh, and that's what I love. That's my favorite workshop because I love to hear people. Oh, I had no idea I needed that type of permit. Or, that, so we, we like to give you sort of all that information up front. And uh, that sort of gives you a bit of a premise or a stepping stone to start from. From there, we have a six week program. It's called Stepping Into Business. And it literally is taking those high level conversations and bringing them down to uh, two hour conversations for six weeks. So one week we'll talk about marketing for two hours. The next week we'll talk about financials. The next week we'll talk about operations. We have some great conversations. It is meant to be interactive. You have a facilitator that will facilitate the conversation. There's learning to be done, but we do encourage people to share and share stories and share examples and things like that to make it more cohort feel um, because you're going through the six weeks probably with the same people every week to week. So it's a nice way to connect with people and understand that you're not alone in this and that there's other people feeling the same things you feel sometimes because it can be a lonely space. I've been an entrepreneur four times. I'm on my fifth business and I still find it lonely, even despite the work I do with the business center. At the end of the six weeks, what we do is we work with a business model canvas during those six weeks. It's, if anybody's not familiar with that, it's a very basic business plan, if you will, on one page. Uh, it's sort of a new way of doing a business or business plan, but we sort of work with each of the components on this business model canvas. So the idea being at the end of the six week, you've got a plan on how you want to move forward. 
And I would say that sometimes that, that either motivates people to move forward with their business idea or, you know what, thanks, but no thanks. I had no idea entrepreneurship was going to be this hard or this difficult or this much thought process. And either way, it's a success to us because you've got the understanding, you've got some, maybe you learned some things and those are all transferable skills. So even if you decide entrepreneurship is not for you, it's a great way to learn things. So, um, but I highly recommend it. Both these courses are free of charge. You just register online and we'll make sure you get included in the process. Really, really good stuff. I have a lot of um, existing businesses that actually take the six week just as a refresher. And oftentimes there's things come up that they forgot about, didn't know about, or there's has changed since they started their business. So it's a great way for them to get updated on what's current as far as policies and procedures and stuff. Then we have some growth programs. Our latest one is called Starter Company Plus. We're actually in application mode right now. This is a the only grant program that we offer at this time. Um, you can, the applicants who are accepted into the program, it is, it is a selection process. I'll have to be straight up about that because there's only so many dollars to go around. Um, but you can receive, if you complete the program, you received up to $5,000 in grant money. And what we do is we work with existing companies that are looking to grow their company to the next level. So we work with them to figure out a pain point, or maybe there's a growth strategy that they want to work on. And we spend four months with you, both with in-class learning and advisory mentor services. So that the idea is to move you, move that needle for you. And over those four months, so that when you come out of it at the end, you're getting a grant and you're also able to propel forward in the next direction. So it's a really good program. If you are interested in this, applications are right now. So please go online. I'll make sure if there's a card over there. I'll show you how to get that. But uh, please make sure you apply. The deadline is uh, September 22nd. So make sure you get that in if you're interested. It is competitive. First come, first serve. And um, like I said, there's only so many seats. So please don't hesitate if you're interested. Okay. I just want to say we've given out... $400,000 over the last five years. So that's a lot of money to it. And that's in Wellington County. So that's both Guelph and Wellington County. So I like to show those numbers sometimes because people say, oh, we never see the money. Yeah, we do. That's a lot of money going out. Um, we also have a mentor, uh, Momentum Mentor Program. This was one that we started through some funding that we received through Trillium. It is still ongoing. Um, and this is specifically, there's no grant money attached to it, but it is sort of a great program if you're looking for some extra, just some mentoring, some coaching. Um, we have industry specialists from actually across the province. So it's not lo necessarily local to Guelph, but if you, for example, if I was in the restaurant industry and I wanted to talk to somebody, but maybe not sure I wanted to talk to somebody local because I just didn't feel comfortable about maybe the confidentiality or had some ideas about things. We will actually match you with a, a restaurant professional from another community somewhere else within the province so that you have that confidentiality. And sometimes it builds different bridges and gives you different opportunities to talk to other people as well. So if that's of interest to you, there's also an application process online. Let's take a look at that. Um, and that was made possible with the original model that was through, a, as I said, a $200,000 investment through Ontario Trillium Fund. Digital Main Street is another great program. It's uh, the next round right now is ending as of September 30th. This is a $2,500 digital grant that is given to businesses that do have a commercial property or pay commercial tax. Um, and it's a $2,500 grant that is given to upgrade your digital platforms. Maybe you'd like to upgrade your digital marketing or hire social media or do some more content or whatever it is that you want to do. It is a $2,500 grant. As I said, the program finishes September 30th. If you are interested, please apply today. Again, all this information is on our website and we'll make sure you get those that information. Um, I don't know if they'll extend it or not. Usually this is a program that's been reoccurring, but we're not sure at this point whether it will continue or not. So don't think, oh, I'll wait for the next round. There might not be one, right? Time is money, so make sure you get uh, signed up for that. And then we have Summer Company, which is a student-run program. We just finished it. Um, it is a come so any young people in your life that are interested in entrepreneurship, this is a great program for this. It is attached to a $3,000 grant and it's for students 15 to 29 who, like I said, are interested in starting their own business. They apply, they actually start and run their own business during the summer. If they do everything they're supposed to do, then they get a $3,000 grant plus keep the value of whatever they earned in their summer business. And I always like to talk about this program. It's been running since, yeah, about 2000 and 
2004, 2005, I think was when it first started. And if anybody's familiar with Sandbox Software Solutions, which is a big company here in Guelph, they actually started in the summer company program. So two gentlemen going to university, looking for a side hustle to support their uh, university life. And, you know, how many years later, 17, 18 years later, they are a company of 12 employees and doing very well and work internationally. So that all started from our little summer company program. Yeah, so we're really proud of that. And again, you can see on an average, we give out about $33,000 a year in student grants. It's about $165,000 over the last five years. So again, all coming back into the county. We always have new offerings, any workshops you might be interested. We do stuff with CRA, Canada Revenue Agency. There's free, all kinds of free workshops about, you know, strategic planning and leadership and thought process and design thinking and things like that. We try to offer these. We bring in specialists. We bring in uh, industry people that are, again, specialists in this area and would love to teach it. We do uh, seminars that are during the day. We do lunch hour. Sometimes we'll do evening ones as well. So please check out our listings um, and, and you can find everything there. So what I would say to you is if you're interested in, in some services that we provide, I've got a postcard on the table there. The best way to connect with us, as I mentioned, all my advisors work virtually. So there's a card there. All you do is click on our website. There's a book now tab. You can book that. You'll uh, get a little short survey. It'll just ask you a little bit of information about what you want to talk about. That's because we want to make sure we carry up with the right advisor. You fill that in and then you'll get a calendar booking for that particular advisor. They, some of them, they're basically office hours, but some of them do work nights. So you can see that. Unfortunately, we don't do weekends, um, but we certainly can do accommodate nights as well or lunch times or some, sometimes we're running our other businesses or working and still looking at the side hustle. So we try to accommodate times as best we can. We can do it through telephone and we do it through Zoom. And so you book that date and time that's best for you. And then you can pick, you'll get a link and then you make that appointment whenever you've booked it. Really easy, simple, right? Uh, workshops, same thing. We have all our information around programming workshops. It's all listed on the website. Our contact information there. Lots that we can help you with. And if there's something I haven't helped you with, I'm certainly happy to answer any questions afterwards. So thank you for your time today. I appreciate that. And I think my colleague Linda's coming up next. I'm going to start that right there for you. <laughs> okay. Just like we're partners, like I know. Hi. Hi. Um, can you hear me? I'm Linda Horowitz. I'm the director of program management at Innovation Guelph, and I would just like to I, I can echo all the um, my colleagues before me. We all work together uh, to make sure that we help uh, companies in the region, in the county. And, um, and as you'll see across Ontario, et cetera, all supporting each other. Sure I've got the right. Uh, so who is Innovation Guelph? Some of you may have heard of us. Uh, we, are, um, we, we support the county, we support our region in Ontario, but we also are, have uh, some companies that are national as well, national programs. And we do this through mentorship, education, um, and services programming, which I'll cover in a little bit, and events also that we, that we provide classes. Uh, we also work with ventures to scale um, from anywhere from pre-revenue up to multi-million dollar companies, small and medium-sized uh, uh, companies. <clears throat> uh, when we talk about events, uh, different kinds of events, as um, Christelle was mentioning, there's uh, events that come up all the time. We have our Toolkit Tuesday that happens on a regular basis. We have program events that are very specific. We're partnering with the uh, county on an ag finance event that is coming up uh, in November. Uh, so we all do work together to make sure that we're supporting everybody. <clears throat> I thought I'd start a little bit um, differently and talk to you about the kind of impact that we have had um, for our last fiscal year, our fiscal year is from April 1st to March 31st, so this would have been last year ending, uh, uh, just to give you an idea of how we have helped, been able to help companies. So um, in that year um, of 22-23, uh, we supported 354 different companies. 
168 of them were, were new. And that's because, um, as uh, it's funny, we use a lot of the same language. We offer sort of what we call also a continuum of care <laughs> because we support a lot of companies over and over again through different programming where we can to be able to continue um, um, supporting them. We provided almost um, just over 9,000 or almost 10,000 um, hours of mentorship with our industry specialists and mentors. We have um, 50, over 50 mentors and specialists that we are contracted to us to support our company. Companies um, through programming, a lot of it through project work, deliverables, and um, uh, execution of projects. Um, and out of that, uh, we, we were able to measure about 204 of them in volunteer. And the reason why we say that is because they are contracted, paid specialists, but they're so dedicated to these companies that they, they spend a lot of time doing it without pay because <laughs> they really, really get close to everybody. And um, not that we encourage it all the time, uh, but, um, but they're very um, committed to the companies that they're working with. 75% um, of the businesses that we support were women-led, women entrepreneurs. We measure that because at Innovation Guelph, under our RISE banner, um, we've been supporting women entrepreneurs for what is it, 10 years now. Um, under the RISE, a very holistic approach to uh, supporting women through education skills, mm -hmm. soft skills, and hard skills, training and coaching and mentorship. Um, and so we do look at that because um, we continuously support um, uh, women in their entrepreneurship. And we were able to facilitate um, to those 354 companies, uh, 916, what we call opportunities. And um, a part of this ecosystem, what makes it, what makes it so great is that we're able to um, work with the ecosystem to provide networking opportunities, panel speaking opportunities, funding opportunities, government engagements, roundtables, um, things that we uh, will be able to um, um, and, and support with other organizations and introductions to the university if they need it or, or whatever, whatever that organization is to be able to support them uh, in their growth and, uh, and utilize the ecosystem to, to help them. Um, the clients that we supported, those 354 clients, 282 of them launched new products, uh, services or technologies. And um, they're also their domestic revenue growth grew by 23% and their export revenue grew by 108% com to a combined value of 32 million in revenue growth over that year. So part of what we are looking for, part of what um, government and funding, we are not for profit as well, look for are um, how can we help companies grow through more jobs, through revenue, through export, and um, we've been able to support those companies. So bringing it a little bit closer, where do we support companies? So um, as mentioned, we are Innovation Guelph, and our beginnings are have always been in, in Guelph and Wellington County. Uh, we also support companies across Southern Ontario, and we have a national program as well. Actually, two now, which I'll talk to you about. But when we look at all the regions that we support, 73% of our client base is actually closer to home. So we, um, in Toronto, the city of Guelph, Waterloo, Wellington County, of course, excluding Guelph is 10% and Halton region. So um, can't see all of that, uh, all the little, the little tiny bits, but 73% um, of them are, close, are much closer to home. Um, and the kind of industries that we support um, is really varied. And so it often depends on the kind of funding that we get to, the kind of program that we have. We partnered with the, the um, Small Business Center with our Rise Ventures program. So it really varied. It was uh, a social enterprise and, and different kinds of um, areas. We've got financial services, education, et cetera. But the top industries that we served are serve, um, our food and beverage, digital media, ICT, which really touches everything now, um, ag tech, clean tech, life sciences and advanced health and advanced manufacturing. That was just for last year. And investment is always important. How do we support companies to get add-on investment into their companies? And our clients received in our last fiscal year a total of $20 million in investment. And that could be through um, government funding, through venture capitalist, um, angel investors, seed funding, um, uh, and even bank bank investments and bank loans. So that just gives you a little picture of what our, of our year is like and how we've been able to help on a, on a bigger scale, not down to the, to the one company, but on a bigger scale, how we've supported companies. 
And how we do that is uh, we really work to, to keep our clients engaged. Um, and so we, we try to get them into the program that best suits them. Uh, and many clients move through various programs. They might start in one program and move to another and move around, and, and um, which is which is um, how we try to that, get in that continuum of care that we call it. And when we can support them or, or if there's another fit somewhere else, as Christelle mentioned, we work with our, our partners, other organizations, the, the county, the, the business center, other regional innovation centers, which is what we are, a regional innovation center, um, and make sure that they get the support that they need. And sometimes they'll be working at both or all three. We find that some of the most successful companies might be working with a few different organizations at the same time, which is fine. So um, just a little bit about the programming that we have, and I won't get into too much detail um, because I could, I'm happy to talk to you afterwards and um, or any time here or uh, uh, after today <laughs> to go into a lot more detail. Uh, but we have our startup program. There's a startup level one, level two, but basically the startup program provides um, education, mentorship, and opportunities for project work. A lot of what we do at Innovation Guelph with our mentors and industry specialists is project work. And when I say projects, they're, they're projects that uh, focus on implementation and execution and deliverables. So um, we have mentorship, but we also have people who will actually provide, you need a financial performer, they create it for you. So that just as an example, um, so you actually walk away with something, uh, a concrete deliverable. Um, this startup program uh, is for companies that are anywhere from zero revenue, pre-revenue, but ready to commercialize scale um, up to a million dollars. And that limit is there because of the funder who's the Ontario government, um, and it's up to a million. And the other things you can get out of um, being part of startup is our benefits like um, you know, market intelligence at no cost. And this is fully funding, uh, fully funded, I should say. Um, Rise Up are, uh, again, a program under the RISE banner, supporting women entrepreneurs. Uh, this is our national program for women entrepreneurs. Um, it's to help uh, women-owned companies to scale. And usually the companies that come into this program are doing about already revenue positive at around 200,000. And now they're trying to figure out how to take it to the next level, because we all know um, that, well, I don't know if we all know, but we do know, we know that when you are moving the zero to 200 is a lot. And from getting from 200 to 500 is a huge step and going from 500 to even 700, a lot of things have to be in place in infrastructure and in, in the organization to make it successful. So helping these uh, women to scale. <clears throat> We are also um, running iHub and the Activate, Activate Circular Accelerator um, under COIL, which is a huge partnership with the City of Guelph and a number of other, other partners, including um, the Wellington County and everybody here in the room. Um, and it's the circular, um, oh my goodness, I've just gone blank on the COIL, circular opportunity innovation launch pad. Okay. You don't have to remember that, but that's what COIL is. And it's basically for companies um, at any stage that are looking to reduce waste and create a circular economy. So they're either looking at ways in their own company to find ways to um, create um, more revenue from outputs that they create or waste that they have or purchasing waste in order to, um, to uh, um, make more, their company more sustainable. Um, it provides seed funding of up to $20,000 with um, project implementation, mentorship, and education as well on, on circularity and circular economy. Um, Idea Fund, that is for a diverse green recovery. Uh, it offers also a seed funding program, so uh, companies were able to get a non-refundable uh, grant of $30,000. That $30,000 had to come with matching funds to create a project. Um, and again, uh, working with mentorship um, to create those projects and, and, and actually deliver those projects um, over a period of time. Um, we actually just won an award for that one, which was pretty cool for a Techna, a Techna Innovation Award for Diversity, um, Inclusion and Equity, because we were able to reduce, have the matching funds reduced for people who are from underrepresented groups so that they could have easier access to financing. So um, that was really supportive as well. 
Um, Quantum Drive, that's a, um, our newest program. It's really exciting. Uh, our first cohort just finished actually last week. Um, and it's um, uh, for early stage companies that are looking for investment readiness. And it comes with education, mentorship, um, and a pitch, and an opportunity to sit in front of um, uh, a, pa a panel of expert um, investors and, uh, and, and actually pitch for money and get money. Um, and our newest one, which is actually just opening up next week, is uh, Venture Capital Ready. And that is also an investment early stage, or not, uh, sorry, any stage investment readiness program for women entrepreneurs. Which we're delivering in partnership with the small scale, small scale um, food processing association. So um, this is for women entrepreneurs who are in food processing or a companion sector. So anybody who's support, like supporting that food processing, and they will also receive training, uh, mentorship, and an opportunity to mingle and party with some investors. Uh, so we're excited and that's also a national program. It's a lot of info. Um, business consulting. So we do have a lot of experts. So just so that you know, we are not for profit, but we do have ongoing mentor support. Again, a fee for service. So a lot of our companies will work with a very closely with a mentor on a project, and then they say, "Well, we never got to this, or we need a little help afterwards, or I need a fractional C um, uh, CFO or a CTO or something like that." And we have that available as well at, at a very great at a great value. And if somebody wants to work with us to do packaging, uh, packages and business consulting, they want a marketing strategy or a business strategy or a sales and business development strategy or an HR strategy, um, you can work directly with us without necessarily going through the program in a fee-for-service fee way. But it's also, we, we, we offer a lot of value um, as a consulting arm. And those are things, anything from leadership training to process improvement to uh, marketing and finance, et cetera, et cetera. So it's um, quite, quite varied. So if you need any information around any of this, um, please let us know. And I did leave um, some brochures there of the programs that are open right now. Um, if you're interested in some information on Innovation Guelph, and I'll also be hanging around if you have any questions as well. That's it for me. I'm not sure who's asking. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. Community futures. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Thanks for having us. Uh, this is Jasmine Nanda. She's an economic development officer, and I'm Rick Whitaker. I'm the uh, manager of the Community Futures Office. Um, we're a federally funded program. We're uh, uh, funded by FedDev, and uh, we uh, operate in the uh, county, the rural townships of the county of Wellington and uh, the region of Waterloo. <clears throat> we have, <clears throat> we uh, we're not for profit. We have uh, four staff and uh, nine board of directors. Uh, Susan Fielding is our director from Listen um, Township. So that's the map of the coverage area. We, we are not allowed to uh, provide services in uh, the city of Guelph, so we refer uh, a lot of the requests we get from the city of Guelph uh, to the other organizations. Um, and so we're kind of like Swiss cheese. We can't go into the region, uh, the city of Guelph or uh, Waterloo, Cambridge or Kitchener. So we, uh, we have uh, three main pillars that were uh, are mandated by Fed, the federal government. Um, one is community economic development. So uh, uh, Jasmine's going to talk more about that. Uh, um, we do business uh, coaching and business um, services to help businesses uh, to get financing or get ready to get financing from traditional sources. But I guess we're be probably best known for uh, the ability to uh, lend money. So um, if businesses can't get um, financing from traditional sources, which is getting more and more likely every day, um, they, uh, they usually come to us. <clears throat> so we can lend up to $300,000 and um, uh, the, direct, the decisions are made by a board of directors. So we have access to the money. Uh, when the decisions are made, we, you can usually turn around a loan application within about a month. 
and um, so the decisions made by the board and then the uh, funds can be transferred. Uh, we would be considered an unconventional lender, so we actually do take more risks than, uh, than most people. Uh, our loss rate is around 6 to 7%, and that's kind of where we want to be. We don't want to be at zero because we're not taking risks. We don't want to be at uh, about 10 because then we're kind of being uh, sloppy with the money. Um, but uh, we do take uh, risks, so we're always kind of on the edge with um, uh, approving loans that uh, typically wouldn't be approved other places. <clears throat> Uh, two days, here's some quick facts. So uh, we've landed $26 million, leveraged another $45 million from that. Um, we generally uh, lend about $2.5 million a year. Uh, we did advance uh, $2.7 million in COVID funding. And so that was uh, money that, um, uh, that was uh, through CFTC. Good news is, I don't know if people saw the news, but SEBA funding has been, or SEBA repayments, uh, don't start for another year, which has been really good, and likely that will translate over to our RRF funding that we provided to uh, the uh, businesses around here. And um, we do some uh, business training workshops. Uh, uh, we actually do most of those because the people who borrow money and uh, um, uh, are in the area like to get together and have uh, conversations with each other. So um, we would get in, uh, we would kind of focus on marketing, financial management and operations. But one of the things we find is that um, uh, really we need to provide training for people who aren't really good at um, uh, wanting to get training. So uh, from, a, from a financial point of view, we would train people on um, uh, unconventional ways to do your financing. One of the biggest challenges we have is having people who we lend money to do good bookkeeping. And so we uh, try to teach them how to do it without uh, getting into, without becoming an accountant. We do have a mentor program. It's free. Uh, we have uh, volunteer mentors and uh, they work with businesses. And then we do economic development, which is why Jeff is here. All righty. Um, so a quick definition in case anyone's wondering what community economic development is. It is a process by which the public sector businesses and community partners work together to make their community a better place to both work and live. So as our colleagues alluded to, Today, uh, we all do work together. I think the best way I think of it as is our businesses and our community are economic development. T together, we grow our communities, and that's what we are doing here. Um, we assist with various things. Um, so that may be facilitation, grant proposal writings, um, research and pod project planning, if you have any ideas. Um, and the most important thing is communication. So again, we work closely with our colleagues. We work with the county. So on specific projects such as a business retention expansion project, I'm sure you'll be hearing from me too. Um, but yes, we always work together and make sure that our businesses and our community have access to the resource that, resources that they need. And again, if it's not coming from us, it's coming from our colleagues. So yes, we try our best to share that information. And this is our last slide, I believe. We are on social media. We want to stay connected with all of you um, at Wellington Marlin Community Futures. So there's our handle. And if you have any questions about anything that we do, please reach out to us. We do have pamphlets, pamphlets over there that you can take and yeah, enjoy. Thank you. Alrighty. So just a full warning here. I don't have any slides. Okay. <laughs> so unfortunately your, your focus has to be on me for the next few minutes, but on the plus side, I promise I won't be talking very long. Okay. All right. So good, good evening, everybody. My name is Duke. I'm a digital consultant at prepper.org. Uh, what prepper is, is we, we are a online learning platform with a difference. I'll go into what that difference is in, in a little bit, but uh, I'm here to talk about the digital transformation program. Uh, that we created at Prepper exclusively for uh, the businesses in the Kushlish area, okay? Uh, the digital transformation program, that's a mouthful, but uh, it's funded by the federal government, and it's specifically to help businesses in the area 
to be more competitive when it comes to future proofing their operations through digital adoption or adaption, depending on where they are in the uh, their business cycle. Okay, uh, they say by 2025, uh, over 50 percent of employees will need to have some sort of digital skills just to be competitive in the just the workforce itself, right? The digital transformation program at Prepper, we position our participants to lead and not be left behind when the digital economy comes full scale. Okay, and they are they are also saying they uh, that you know when the digital economy comes along, there will be a demand for uh, at least 250,000 new digital jobs out there. Okay, so that's where we come in, where we would train, uh, you know, your your employees to get these digital skills to carry on with their career uh, in, into the future. Okay, so at Prepper, how we're different is that we take a holistic approach to uh, to the learning. The, the new digital skills. Uh, not only does it cover this, the actual skills itself, the tools that are used in digital adoption, and also <clears throat> strategy behind it too. Okay, uh, the uh, digital the transportation program it focuses it focuses the the learners to effectively use tools specifically for digital marketing, sales, and customer service to uh, directly improve the, the businesses that they're working uh, in and, and for at that th at the moment. Uh, so you might be thinking, okay, wait a second, my business is pretty small. I, I don't even have <laughs> employees or, or sort of thing, but I do know that I need uh, some sort of digital uh, transformation in my business. So, you know, how do I even get involved in that, that kind of thing? Well, at digital uh, at, at preppers, uh, we also have that accounted for because in addition to training uh, potential employees within the local businesses around here, we also are training uh, local job seekers so that they'll get the same kind of training that uh, if you send your employees to get training on, but they'll be at a more intense level uh, so that if you happen to, uh, as a business, um, hire one of these graduates, they can hit the ground running with the same kind of training to carry out uh, any uh, digital transformation uh, objectives that you have for your business. Okay. Um, so I want to emphasize, uh, again, with, with this program, it is federal, federally funded, so it costs nothing to the business itself, and there are subsidies and even completion bonuses uh, for the folks that participate in this, right? So just imagine, you know, learning new skills, helping your business grow, and also getting paid, right? It's win-win-win. <laughs> so yeah, so if you have any questions with regards to this, um, grab them for sure. I, I brought along, or just ask me any questions. You like with regards to this, okay? And that's it. All right. Well, that's the end of our presentation part of the night. Um, so what we're going to do is we actually have a slideshow of photos that have been provided uh, by our various this so businesses so far. We're just going to run them on the screen behind for a little bit. Uh, you can stick around. Uh, get some of that documentation that was mentioned, uh, grab a refreshment, um, and thank you again for everyone for coming. <laughs>